application of pharmacokinetics in disease state then grades of renal impairment then renal disease then effect of renal disease on pharmacokinetic then dose adjustment in renal disease then clearance based dose adjustment in renal disease then parameters for dose adjustment then methods for dose calculation in renal patients and then gfr measurement methods so first of all we will start our lecture with pharmacokinetics so pharmacokinetics is the study of kinetics of drug absorption distribution metabolism and excretion of drugs and their pharmacologic therapeutic or toxic response in animals and men so basically pharmacokinetics is the study of um, absorption distribution metabolism and excretion parameters and um, also their pharmacological therapeutic and toxic responses in animals and humans so what are the applications of pharmacokinetics most common disease which require dose adjustment and application of pharmacokinetics are renal renal diseases and liver disease um as renal disease um renal root is most important for the excretion of the drugs and liver is most important organ for metabolism of the drug so both um if both the both of these organs are affected or in uh, you can say that they are disease um, both of these function will be compromised so we will start now uh, grades of renal impairment so what are the grades of renal impairment and um first of all we will study grades that is um normal grade in normal grade gfr is uh, 120 to 130 ml per minute per 1.73 meter uh, meter square in first uh, this is the surface area and serum creatinine level that is um, uh, given in units of milligram per deciliter and its range is 0.7 to 1.4 in case of mild impairment gfr uh, falls to 50 to 80 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square inverse and serum creatinine level uh, increased to 1.5 to 3 and in case of moderate uh, impairment gfr further falls to 30 to 50 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square inverse and um, serum creatinine level rise uh, raised to 3.3 uh, 3 to 7 mg per deciliter in case of severe impairment uh, gfr that is glomerular filtration rate falls below 30 degree 30 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square inverse and um serum creatinine level increased or raised to uh, 7 mg per deciliter so these are the grades of grades of renal impairments then come renal disease uremia is the most common uh, you know, uh, common disease in case of renal Uh, diseases in case of urea is the accumulation of the urea or nitrogenous waste material in the um, uh, in the blood or in the body so uremia is impaired glomerular filtration um, in case of um, or you can say uremia causes accumulation of excessive uh, fluid in the body um, blood nitrogenous products um, that are um, not excreted through the kidney and they are stored into the body and they causes different types of uh, diseases um and then causes of an uremia disease or trauma in the kidney then drug overdose then drug induced uh, it can also be drug induced for example ac inhibitors amino glycosides and vitamins and nsaids um these are the drugs that will induce nephrotoxicity or you can say um, uremia and uh, kidney diseases so now we will discuss disease causing uremia um there are different diseases that can also lead to uremia 
um, of these examples are diabetes mellitus, hypertension, then glomerulonephritis, then polycystic kidney disease, then obstruction or infection in kidney, then analgesic nephropathy. Um, out of these, uh, diabetes mellitus and hypertension, these are the most you know, leading cause of uremia. In case of glomerular nephritis, um, the glomerular, uh, filter, uh, glomerular vessels that are found in the human capsule of the uh, kidney um, or the nephron, um, they are inflamed and um, they lead to um, uremia. Then polycystic disease. In case of polycystic disease, multiple cysts are found on the kidney, um, which are fluid filled vesicles and they lead to uremia. Then obstruction or infection in kidney. These infections, um, this, is, this is the you know, cause of, um, in case of infection, it also lead to um, kidney disease or uremia. Then come obstruction. In case of obstruction, um, it may be due to uh, kidney stones, which get accumulated into the uh, vessels in kidney and lead to infection. Uh, then analgesic nephropathy. In case of analgesic nephropathy, um, uh, nephron um, get affected by the use of uh, excessive use of analgesics, uh, usually NSAIDs. Then effects of renal disease on pharmacokinetic. Uremia affect nearly all pharmacokinetic process through um, the main effect is on the excretion. Uh, excretion is mainly affected in case of pharmacokinetic processes and um, uh, in case of um, um, you know, pharmaco how the pharmacokinetic parameters get affected. First of all, decrease renal excretion and how the renal uh, drug excretion uh, get reduced. It reduced due to reduced GFR, that is reduced glomerular filtration rate or due to reduced active secretion. Active secretions are usually secreted in the uh, proximal uh, convoluted tubule, then loop of Henle and in uh, distal convoluted tubules. Um, uh, active secretions, they uh, really help in the uh, reabsorption of drugs and um, uh, many, get, uh, many drugs get reabsorbed from the uh, tubules and, uh, the, and uh, it, also, it is also affected by uremia. Physiological and metabolic changes uh, due to disturbance in electrolyte and fluid balance. Um, the fluid balance get uh, disturbed by uh, reduced um, uh, pharmacokinetic effect or uh, you know decreased renal drug excretion a few get accumulated into the body and due to that physiological balance of the uh, body fluids uh, get disturbed um, then oral bioavailability is generally unchanged but rate of absorption may, may be changed uh, oral bioavailability is not affected but um, the rate of absorption get affected by uh, renal diseases um, then generally bioavailability decreases as a result of disease related changes in GIT motility and pH caused by nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. And these are the factors that will uh, reduce the GI motility and they also cause uh, uh, pH changes um, due to which um, bioavailability of the drug get reduced. Um, and also mesenteric blood flow may be altered and the bioavailability of drug which has high first pass effect in patient with renal impairment is increased as a result of decrease in first pass hepatic metabolism, example is propanerol. In case of drugs that, um, that show high first pass effect um, in renal impairment patient, um, the bioavailability of, or you can say the hepatic first pass effect of these, get, uh, these drugs get reduced due to uh, reduced Hepat, uh, hepatic first pass effect, the free drug concentration in the blood uh, get increased or um, its level is higher due to which the bioavailability of drug is increased. And example of such drugs is propanolol. Then comes altered distribution as a result of changes in fluid balance, um, drug protein binding in plasma or tissue and total body water. Um, as a result of reduced and renal drug excretion or uh, imbalance in uh, fluid accumulation into the body or uh, imbalance in the fluid distribution to the body, what happened is that the protein binding of the drugs get affected. Uh, water-soluble drugs, for example, amino glycosides may have altered volume of distribution 
as volume of distribution is get disturbed uh, due to this water soluble drugs such as amino glycosides um, its volume of distribution also varied digoxin volume of distribution is lower in case of renal impairment the volume of distribution that is available uh, for digoxin to distribute in the body uh, it also get reduced or lower in case of renal impairment uh, then altered protein binding due to accumulation of drug metabolite and biochemical uh, metabolites free fatty acids and urea which compete for protein binding site for active drugs um, in case of uh, protein binding uh, uh, as metabolites and biochemical metabolites they get not um, they are not excreted from the uh, uh, you know from the body through the uh, renal excretion so due to accumulation of these metabolites and biochemical metabolites um, the protein binding sites which are available for the active drugs uh, get occupied by uh, these metabolites and meta um, biochemical metabolites and due to which um, as these binding sites are occupied by these uh, substances or metabolites uh, due to which protein binding sites are not available for the active drug to get um, attached to it and uh, to perform its function so uh, the protein binding is also affected due to which the free drug that is available into, into the blood uh, its level is increased or raised um, due to which um, there is um, increase in level of free drug that is available into the blood which lead to higher uh, uh, therapeutic effect or you can say excessive uh, drug into the blood uh, which lead to uh, which may lead to toxicity plasma protein binding of weak acidic drug in uremic patient is decreased uh, so in case of plasma protein by in case of weak acidic drugs um, that are bound to plasma protein it get decreased in case of uremic patients uh, bio transformation in renal excretion is also altered in renal impairment um, bio transformation in renal excretion uh, what is the linkage between them as um, i have told you in my previous lectures that bio transformation enzymes are also uh, found in the kidney so due to uh, these enzyme uh, bio transformation process that is phase 1 reaction or phase 2 reaction phase 1 reaction oxidation um, uh, reduction reactions uh, really happen in phase 1 reaction and uh, in case of phase 2 reaction uh, glucuronidation or conjugation reactions usually takes place in phase 2 reaction uh, phase 2 uh, of bio transformation so these processes may also take place into the kidney and due to which uh, renal um, and due to renal impairment renal excretion may also be altered and it also affect bio transformation uh, of different drugs metabolism of drugs that are metabolized in kidney uh, is generally impaired as um, as i have told you that there are many enzymes that are um, uh, also found into the kidney for metabolism of different drugs um, but they are uh, present in lower proportion so uh, if the kidney function is uh, compromised or uh, kidney function is compromised or uh, renally uh, it is renally impaired then uh, the metabolism of drug that takes place into the kidney it is also uh, get affected uh, then first pass hepatic metabolism is decreased and thus lead to increased bioavailability as first pass affect um, uh, that is uh, hepatic metabolism uh, it get affected or it get decreased then it lead to um, uh, increase in free drug concentration and um, the free drug uh, as a free drug is more available into the blood so it will uh, increase the bioavailability of the of that drug then elimination half life is generally prolonged due to due to reduced uh, glomerular filtration rate um, as the drug um, uh, you know get uh, doesn't get uh, excreted through glomerular filtration or it uh, it is not um, um, absorbed or you can say it is not uh, excreted or uh, eliminated through the kidney uh, due to reduced GFR then uh, elimination half-life of that drug will be increased or prolonged um, then reduce total body clearance as um, the renal function is compromised then it lead to reduce total body clearance of the drug as the drug is not um, available into the kidney for excretion so its body clearance will also be reduced um, next is dose adjustment in renal uh, disease. So um, there are some drugs that that do not require any dose adjustment. So um, uh, the example of these drugs are uh, that 
are those drugs that are uh, eliminated primarily by metabolism uh, so they are not uh, affected by renal impairment then um, that are eliminated uh, by biliary excretion so they are not also um, they are also not affected by renal impairment um, then when level of uremia does not alter pharmacokinetic sufficiently uh, then uremia uh, does not uh, does not affect pharmacokinetic parameters um, then um, these drugs also not require dose adjustment um, then comes dose adjustment in renal disease um, there are some assumptions which we assume uh, for dose adjustment in case of renal impairment um, these are first of all creatinine clearance accurately measure the degree of renal impairment um, in this case we uh, consider uh, creatinine clearance uh, for the accurate measurement of renal uh, impairment or the renal function uh, so the estimation of uh, creatinine clearance gives the estimation of um, uh, the renal uh, impairment then comes drug clearance decline linearly when uh, with creatinine clearance as the creatinine clearance or the uh, creatinine that is cleared from uh, the blood is estimated um, if it is a uh, decline then drug clearance will also be declined as uh, uh, the kidney function is compromised or uh, renal functions are impaired uh, then known renal drug clearance remain constant as um, and there are many other routes through which drug get extruded from the body so uh, the no, uh, the effect of uh, renal impairment is not uh, very much sufficient on the uh, or the renal impairment will not affect known renal drug clearance so it will remain constant uh, the unchanged drug absorption from git uh, unchanged drug absorption from git is all also not affected by renal impairment then drug protein binding may or may be altered due to accumulation of urea and nitrogenous waste so uh, protein binding uh, it is um, it may also be altered due to uh, accumulation of urea and other nitrogenous waste that are accumulated in case of renal impairment uh, then targeted target drug concentration remain the same so the target drug concentration that is uh, from the body it will remains the same mm -hmm. clearance based um, clearance based dose adjustment in renal in renal disease okay uh, now clearance based dose adjustment in renal disease so the um, dose adjustment in case of uh, clear in case of renal diseases uh, based on clearance uh, does dose may be adjusted for uremic patients either uh, first of all by reducing normal dose and keeping dose interval constant so in this case uh, the uh, normal dose is reduced and the dosing intervals they will remain constant um, the second case is by decreasing frequency of dosing and keeping dose constant uh, in second case what we will do we will reduce the frequency of uh, dosing but we will um, keep the dose constant and then comes parameters for dose adjustment there are many parameters which are have which we have to consider for dose adjustment so pharmacokinetic parameters required in dose adjustment in renal uh, patients are um, drug clearance uh, rate of elimination then fraction of ex uh, excreted uh, drug unchanged um, uh, excreted unchanged drug then trough and peak concentration uh, then comes time above a threshold trough and peak concentration css average that is uh, concentration at steady state average concentration at steady state then area under the curve and out of physiological parameters that are required uh, for dose adjustment are the uh, creatinine clearance uh, then comes aiming uh, pharmacokinetic targets for dose adjustment trough concentration are easy to measure and uh, surrogate for uh, area under curve and um, con and concentration at steady state so trough concentration uh, is as it is easy to measure and it, it and it also uh, serve as a surrogate or you can say alternative for area under curve and uh, concentration at steady state so time above threshold is you a minimum concentration below which there is treatment failure and above which um, desired response occur so a threshold level is the level um, below which um, there will be no effect and uh, or you can say that therapeutic failure it will lead to therapeutic failure and above 
this concentration or above the threshold level, um, the desired responses, or you can say that is uh, the therapeutic outcome will be, uh, uh, will be achieved. And a CSS average more reliable than drug concentration for drugs with longer half-life or if it is infused. If the drug is infused, in that case, um, uh, average, con average concentration at steady state is more reliable parameter than uh, trough concentration uh, for those drugs that have higher elim uh, uh, longer elimination half-life. Uh, then comes a surrogate for steady state area under curve. So it also serves as an alternative for steady state area under curve. Area under curve measures the exposure of drug, exposure of drug which depend on the total dose and clearance. So area under curve uh, is is the measure or um, uh, measure the exposure of drug um, which depend on the uh, total dose and clearance. And um, next is method for dose calculation in renal patient. These are um, drug clearance based, then overall elimination rate constant based, and uh, the last is creatinine serum or serum creatinine or clearance based. So um, uh, in case of GFR measurement, um, GFR may be measured by a single injection of creatinine EDTA um, and um, drug markers such as inulin, uh, blood urea nitrogen, endogenous markers such as creatinine and cysteine C. Uh, so in, the, uh, in case of single injection of creatinine, clear, uh, creatinine EDTA, what we will do, we will administer the injection and then after uh, after the drug get excreted or you can say for, by taking the samples from the urine we will estimate that how much drug is obtained into the uh, urine um, by that estimation you can calculate that how much drug you have administered and how much it is um, excreted from the body uh, then drug markers such as inulin in uh, case of inulin the same uh, principle is adopted as in case of creatinine uh, edta then blood urea nitrogen by estimating blood urea nitrogen or how much nitrogenous waste are found into the blood, um, they can also give the estimation of uh, GFR that how much kidney functions are efficiently performed. Then endogenous markers such as can, uh, creatinine and cysteine C. Uh, these markers are creatinine, how much creatinine is excreted into the urine or what is the level of creatinine into the uh, urine. Uh, by that level, we can also estimate the GFR, um, that is glomerular filtration rate, uh, through cystin C. Though cystin C, and cystatin C is becoming more popular, but creatinine is still the most commonly used endogenous marker for estimation of uh, GFR. So, creatin uh, for for estimation uh, for estimation of uh, glomerular filtration rate, um, the um, creatinine is uh, is still the most commonly used um, uh, endogenous market for uh, GFR measurement. Uh, then come, and this is creatinine-based GFR measurement. Overestimation of GFR is the issue, but since uh, creatinine production is equal to creatinine excretion, the serum creatinine level um, remains constant. Uh, so over, uh, GFR can be overestimated, but as um, creatinine production uh, is equivalent to creatinine excretion, so in that case, serum creatinine level remains the constant, okay? Uh, in patients with reduced GFR, creatinine accumulation is, um, is in accordance with the degree of loss of GFR. So in the patient uh, who have reduced GFR, uh, creatinine accumulation uh, will be greater and it will be according to the degree of uh, uh, loss in uh, glomerular filtration rate. Uh, by taking age, sex, muscle, mass into consideration, uh, clearance, uh, creatinine clearance based GFR uh, can be made reliable. Uh, so for calculation of uh, creatinine clearance, uh, we have to uh, take into account the or uh, take into consideration uh, age, sex, and muscle mass um, also. Uh, then serum creatinine is used to determine creatinine clearance as it is rapid and convenient way to monitor kidney functions. So creatinine uh, clearance uh, or serum creatinine um, is used to deter, as serum creatinine is used to measure the creatinine clearance. So it is the rapid and you can say that convenient method for monitoring the kidney functions. Um, then comes creatinine based measurement. Uh, creatinine uh, clearance creatinine is the volume of plasma that is cleared of creatinine per unit, uh, per unit time. So those adjustment is required when creatinine uh, clearance or uh, serum creatinine level or the creatinine clearance level uh, falls below 50 ml per minute. 
classically criterion clearance is uh, measured in ml per minute um, and it and its formula is given by uh, clear, uh, creatinine clearance is equal to rate of urinary excretion of creatinine divided by serum concentration of creatinine. So uh, now uh, we will discuss the methods for GFR measurement. There are five methods for the measurement of GFR. These are Cockroft and Gollet method, Schwartz method, uh, Schwartz formula, modification of diet in renal disease formula, then uh, Trobs Johnson's method, and then Billing and Crag method. So we will discuss uh, them one by one. First of all, Crockcroft, uh, Crockcroft, and uh, Gullet method. Uh, it is used for the estimation of um, to estimate adult creatinine uh, clearance from the blood uh, blood creatinine, considering both age and weight of the patient. So it is given by creatinine clearance is equal to 140 minus age into weight into 0 0.85 divided by 72 into serum creatinine level. So uh, in this case, 0 0.85 is the factor, and um, uh, and this factor is for female and in case of males I think the factor is one um, so this equation is assumed and by this equation assumed that creatinine clearance uh, is at steady state and creatinine production is normal and um, if renal uh, function declines the time to achieve creatinine clearance steady state will increase and method um, overestimate the true renal function so in case of and, and decline renal functions, the time to achieve creatinine clearance will be uh, increased. And in that case, um, this method will overestimate the true renal functions. Uh, so uh, thus it is required to monitor the direction and rate of change in creatinine clearance in patients with unstable renal function and for drugs with narrow therapeutic index, and that is cleared by renal route. So um, um, uh, we have to uh, monitor uh, the direction and rate of change in creatinine clearance in patients uh, who have unstable renal function uh, for drugs um, uh, for drugs like that have narrow therapeutic index and um, that is essentially cleared by renal route. So for that drugs, we have to monitor um, uh, monitor the direction and rate of clear, uh, creatinine clearance. Uh, the next method is Schwartz method, Schwartz formula, and it is really um, this method is used for uh, children of age 1 to 12 years and it is based on height and serum creatinine level and it is given by GFR is equal to K into height divided height in centimeter divided by serum creatinine in milligram per deciliter and uh, in um, uh, you know in uh, uh, we have a classified uh, uh, child uh, children uh, children into uh, different uh, age groups or you can say um, on the basis of their age into different uh, classifications so uh, for the first year of life or for preterm babies, um, uh, the value of K, K is the constant. So value of K will be 0 0.33. And in case of uh, for full term infants, K will be uh, K will be equivalent to 0 0.45. And for infants and children of age 1 to 12 years, K will be equal to 0 0.55. So according to age, it will be vary. The next method is modification. Uh, modification in uh, modification of diet in renal disease uh, formula to give estimated uh, GFR or renal degree of impairment. Uh, the most commonly used formula is the four variable um, uh, modification of uh, uh, modification of diet modification of diet uh, in renal disease, um, um, which estimate GFR using four variables. First is serum creatinine, then age then uh, ethnicity and then gender. So its formula is GFR that is um, ml per minute per 1.73 per meter square is equal to 1.175 uh, into uh, serum creatinine raised power minus 1.154 uh, and age uh, raised power minus 0 0.203 into factor. And uh, factor in this case is equal to 0 0.742 in case of females and uh, factor will be equal to 1.212 in if we can black and one for male. Uh, next is um, Sirsbach nelsons method. Uh, it is a, a nomographic method to estimate adult creatinine clearance. It is based on age, weight, and serum creatinine. So connect a uh, patient weight on second line from left with age on uh, fourth line with the ruler. Um, uh, kept ruler at point of intersect on R. Uh, turn right of ruler 
to appropriate tantalum clearance and left side will indicate the uh, clearance per minute so here it is the it is uh, you can see you can see that uh, it is the clearance this is the weight this is this uh, age and this is the serum creatinine level so if we place the ruler here according to age of the patient and the weight is here so we can calculate the serum creatinine level and also the clearance by um, 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 by placing the ruler um, in this direction and uh, where the ruler intersect the serum creatinine and clearance level it will indicate the uh, uh, serum creatinine level and the clearance of uh, that patient so next is the crop johnson's method uh, this is also a nomographic a nomographic method which can through which we can estimate the gfr based on patient height and it is usually used for the uh, patient or uh, patient uh, who have age between 6 to 12 years and to predict the creatinine clearance connect the age uh, of uh, connect the ch uh, child's serum creatinine level and height with the ruler and read the clearance creatinine where ruler intersect the central line so in this case what we will do um, we will uh, determine uh, we know the height and serum creatinine level we should know these two parameters then we can calculate the clearance by placing the ruler um, uh, uh, at the point of height and serum creatinine level and where these uh, uh, where uh, this line intersect the creatinine clearance it will give the uh, clear, creatinine clearance or the level of creatinine into the uh, blood or the volume of the creatinine that is cleared of the blood then welling prag method this is the method in, uh, it will provide estimate of ratio of uremic uh, ke uh, or ku to the normal ke or kn on the basis of um, uh, clearance creatinine nomographic method based on uh, groups of drugs from a to l and category a as highest um, KU over KN ratio and L has the least. So I will show. Uh, so uremic dose is equal to KU divided by KN into normal dose. The uh, usual dose is kept constant, and dose interval is increased. So in this case, you can say there are different categories of the drug from A to L. So according to that, uh, this is um, the T half life over um, T half life uremic divided by T half life normal. And this is KU over KN value, and this is the creatinine clearance that is given in milligram per uh, ml per minute. So uh, by this method, we can calculate um, this method. Okay. Uh, now, in the summary of this this lecture is that we have we have studied pharmacokinetic application of pharmacokinetic in disease state, then grades of, of renal impairment, then renal disease, then effect of renal disease on pharmacokinetic, then dose adjustment in renal disease, then clearance based dose adjustment in renal uh, disease, then parameters for dose adjustment, then methods for dose calculation in renal patients, and then GFR measurement methods, in which we have studied five methods. So uh, thank you for listening. And um, uh, if you have any question pertaining to this lecture, you can ask me on Google Classroom discussion board. And the class board for Google Classroom is mentioned here. So thank you so much, student, for listening.